honor to join you at this time of holy fellowship to millions of Christians around the world. Although we are not worshiping as we normally do, we are indeed together in mind, in heart, and in spirit. We are strengthened by the invincible bonds of faith and fellowship. As we commemorate Easter this year, a shadow hangs over our world. We're in the grip of a pandemic, the likes of which we have not seen as human beings over a hundred years. The coronavirus continues to spread, leaving devastation in its wake. More than a million people are infected. Over 90,000 people in this world have lost their lives. In the rich countries of the North and the South, people have died in large numbers. In South Africa, nearly 2,000 people have become infected with the virus and 20 have tragically lost their lives. Last night, I announced that the nationwide lockdown that has been announced by our government will continue. I also announced a range of measures we have put in place to protect our economy and also to protect those who are at risk of infection, to care for the sick, and support those who are in need. This is a time of great uncertainty for all of us. Many of us are anxious about our health and the health of our children. We worry how we will be able to make ends meet or if we will have jobs to go back to. The poorest people in our country worry about where their next meal is going to come from. Our young people are unsure that they will be able to finish their studies or graduate. Business owners are counting the costs of the closures and what it will mean for them and those who depend on them to earn a living. Many people in our country feel vulnerable. Others feel frustrated and powerless, and indeed many are afraid. But we South Africans are res resilient people. We endure the West, and we have indeed in the past endured the West excesses of a dark past and we were able to emerge but we emerged united and strong the virtues of courage of optimism and of compassion carried us along the path to freedom and they are what has sustained us in the past and will continue to sustain us as we recall and recount the life of Christ on Good Friday, we also remember the greatest virtue of all, and that is the virtue of sacrifice. Despite the heavy burden that has been placed on our people over the past two weeks, we have understood that for greater good, these sacrifices have to be made. Our people have endured the extreme restrictions on their daily lives with patience and fortitude. As Christians, the belief that Christ gave his life as a ransom for humankind is the most fundamental tenet of faith. Today, many Christians around the world recite the way of the cross remembering the pain Christ suffered. This meditation 
on deprivation and adversity is a reminder that throughout history, as they face daily life, every human being upon this earth has had their own cross to bear. The coronavirus pandemic is a heavy cross being carried on the shoulders of all of humankind at the moment. Rich and poor, young and old, black and white, men and women are suffering under its weight in one form or another. But the message of Easter is also one of hope, of recovery, of triumph, and of rebirth. We have the utmost confidence that the measures we've taken of declaring a national state of disaster and of imposing a lockdown have been correct and absolutely necessary. Since the lockdown began, the rate of identified new cases has slowed. Together with other measures, like closing our borders and putting on an end to public gatherings, we are seeing progress. If we continue to observe social distancing and proper hygiene, if we continue to scale up detection and testing to ensure those who need medical care get it, we will be able to turn things around. The faith community has played a vital role in supporting the national effort to contain the virus and for this we thank each and every one of you in the faith community. It has not been easy. Worshipping in congregation is a source of strength and comfort to many. It has been hard for those who have lost loved ones to be unable to attend their burials. Couples wishing to marry have had to postpone their plans, but you have endured with patience, and for this we thank you. In the true spirit of Christian fellowship, you have extended a hand to the poor, to the sick, and to the hungry. You have continued to pray for those who are in the front line of fighting this virus. And you have also continued to some of us who are in leadership positions. A few days ago, Archbishop Mahoba prayed for me as president over the telephone. And I felt comforted, strengthened and encouraged by that prayer. The pastoral and charity work by our Christian community has been a lifeline for many of our people in their hour of need and comfort in their time of sorrow. On behalf of all the people of South Africa, I do thank you. As we are reminded in the scriptures, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We have a long and difficult journey before us. If we are to emerge victorious, we must remain vigilant. We have to continue to comply with the restrictions that are so necessary to preserve human life in our country. We have to take the greatest of care of our own health and the health of those around us. We have to expend our every effort and energy to ensure that this period of hardship does not leave our economy in ruins. We have to give support to those who need our help in any way that we can. I call upon each all of us to make donation in the form of time, the form of helping, the form of even finance, no matter how small. 
I call upon you to continue to help your friends, your neighbors, and those whom you do not even know through the acts of kindness and charity that you can perform each day. This is the time of great trial for our country. We will at times find ourselves and our faith sorely tested. Yet we know that the harshest of tests pushes us to preserve, to persevere and to prevail. Working together, side by side, we will weather this storm and we shall indeed overcome. Humanity will rise again and I wish you all good health and good spirit. May the Easter message unite us, nourish us, and give us strength in the days ahead. May God bless our people, protect them, and preserve them. May he continue to hold us in the palm of his hand. I thank you. Job, uh, the words from the president and then offer an adopted a version of the God bless our